Okay, <laughs> leaky gut is almost at the heart of autoimmune. I just, it is absolutely a priority to be looking at a leaky gut syndrome or, uh, or intestinal permeability as yes, it's more recognized yes. as a more yes, of a yes. medical terminology. Leaky gut is more of a nickname. So when there is gut damage, which can come from stress, it can come from eating the wrong foods, it can food intolerances, not digesting properly. When there is gut damage and leaky gut, there's, there's two things that happen here. There's an inability to absorb the nutrients. That's number one. When we look at some of the, the, the supports that we need for the immune system, things like fat soluble vitamins, your AD, E and K are huge players in the immune system. And when we've got a dysfunctional gut, particularly if there's a bacterial overgrowth that is stopping the bile, it, you know, the bile is released and then the, the gut bacteria sort of stop the bile working. So then we're not absorbing our fat soluble vitamins. These are the, the building blocks that actually support our immune system to work. So that's number one is that we stop absorbing our nutrients. Number two, we get an increase in endotoxins that come through the gut wall and enter the bloodstream. And this triggers the immune system to produce the cytokines. And then the immune system is on high alert, which creates an increased stress response, which decreases digestion. So we've got this real mix happening where the high stress is stopping us digesting, but also the gut damage was stopping us digesting. And when we are not able to digest effectively, then we get more food allergies, more food intolerances, more indigestion, and then that contributes to more gut damage and more leaky gut. So this is why working with leaky gut is a really, really important thing to do. There, looking at microbiome dysfunction, there is this 2020 study that has linked all, I think that's, that's, that's quite a big claim, has linked all chronic inflammatory diseases with gut permeability. So this is why we, we have to be focusing on the gut if we want to get underneath the immune system. So this comes onto one of my hands points. So what I find... <laughs> yes, you the back with your hand. <laughs> so one of the things that you and I have talked about um, is I mean just how fascinating uh, it is when you start looking at what triggers uh, autoimmune, what's actually happening in the immune system when we get an autoimmune condition. And actually, when you think about it, there's kind of only three ways an immune system can go. It's either balanced and sort of clinging on there and you know doing okay, or you know maybe it's like tailing off quite a lot. And when it tails off quite a lot and it's not really doing anything, that's when you start to get things like tumors and stuff where the body's just going, can't see it, can't see it, can't see it. Or you get an autoimmune disease where it's like in complete overdrive. We now have an awful lot that starts to talk about, you know, uh, diabetes is a chronic inflammatory disease. Uh, most cardiovascular diseases, unless they are mechanical, which is a very, very small percentage, um, unless they're actually properly mechanical, most cardiovascular disease that we call cardiovascular disease today are actually inflammatory conditions, inflammatory diseases. So anything where there's like a high cholesterol, um, uh, things like that, that, that's an inflammatory disease. That's not a mechanical disease. That's not a congenital heart defect, for example. So when you actually start to break down what is going on in this global health crisis that we are seeing play out because everyone and everything is, seems to be unwell, they are predominantly chronic inflammatory diseases. So this is this overstimulation in the immune system. It's fascinating. I mean, actually, the same thing is happening in uh, states where the immune system isn't functioning very well. It's just the immune system's responding in one way or another. And so I actually believe um, that one day we're going to have a look at the way we're looking at the health model and we're going to see that actually everything is the immune system. It really all, it mostly is apart from the mechanical and, and or very, very rare genetic uh, faults that, you know, people where they switch them on, et cetera, et cetera. 
So it starts to become very interesting because when I start to think about fatigue disorders, it's one of the things that Laura and I have always said. I always go, oh, I feel so, I'm, it's like I feel so autoimmune. I do not have an autoimmune disease. I have a fatigue disorder. It's fascinating because you and I, our experiences are so similar. So my fatigue disorder is uh, premature ovarian um, insufficiency. Well, if someone's trying to tell me that, you know, my body hasn't kind of gone, I don't know what's going on in my immune system and it shut down my ovaries. No, no one's ever investigated POI like, effectively. Uh, it just wouldn't surprise me. I have absolutely no research to back this up. I'm genuinely interested and curious that one day we're actually going to look at the immune system dysfunctions and go, oh, we had it all completely wrong because the medical model likes to separate them out. This was uh, another point on my hand is that one of the issues that we see with people with autoimmune conditions when they've got multiple autoimmune conditions is the way that the medical model approach it is you will see the specialist for wherever that condition manifests. So if you have ankylosing spondylitis, uh, which is I find really hard to spell, if you have ankylosing spondylitis, you'll be seeing um, the bones doctor. What are they called? Yeah, them. Uh, <laughs> orthopedics. That's not feet, is it? No, orthopedics. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly feeling very menopausal brain tonight. Uh, if you have uh, psoriasis, you'll be seeing dermatology. If you have multiple sclerosis, you'll be with a neurologist. If you have, it doesn't matter which, uh, for Hashimoto's thyroiditis, you'll be with the endocrinologist. You and will see, you'll be with the gynecologist. Yeah. Gynecologist. So they're dealing with the organ. They're not looking at this whole thing. And, and it's what's really known is if you get an autoimmune disease under control, like celiac disease, which is like, once you're diagnosed, that's technically one of the easiest to manage because you just don't go anywhere near gluten. Except what we know is that people with celiac disease, actually, if they control that almost too well and they haven't dealt with the root cause issue, the body will then create another autoimmune disease. And so we're not looking at this root cause um, sort of issue, which is exactly what we're talking about here, which is why I get super excited because of the guidelines in the medical world, because of this myopic approach, they haven't got the capability of looking at this whole health approach. And so this is one of these places where I get super excited because it's not them and us, it's actually a different approach but that in future can absolutely a mesh for sure because we're not saying that someone struggling with a you know a life limiting or life affecting autoimmune disease should never go on steroids so some people if that is the difference between being able to get out of bed for a few months and not you know i i have a big issue with being in such absolutes around health that we go oh i would never do this and i would never do that and i go actually do what you can do to live your life but be dealing with the root cause stuff whilst you're going along to try and put the scaffolding around so that this hopefully doesn't happen in future or you can manage it. So, so that's where I get quite um, excited about the potential of how as frontline coaches, we're really gonna be stepping into a place where with the medical model being so under-resourced um, that we, we, are, we are gonna be so helpful.